It's the middle of July and it is hot as you know what here in the desert. The temperatures are in the triple digits and the last place I want to be is on my patio in front of a hot grill cooking. So today I'm going to smoke ribs on my stovetop. You'll find this recipe on page 45 in my cookbook, The Road to Good Cooking. I like to smoke baby back ribs because they're leaner and more flavorful than spare ribs. Tea smoking ribs is a three step process. The first step, I'm going to set my roasting pan over two burners on my stove top and I'm going to smoke my ribs for 30 minutes. The second step, I'm going to remove the roasting pan from the burner and let it rest for 30 minutes. The third step, I'm going to place my ribs in an oven and cook them low and slow for an hour and a half, remove them from the oven, generously coat them with an Asian inspired barbecue sauce and return them back to the oven for 30 minutes roasting time. As my dad used to say, these ribs are going to be finger licking, lip smacking good. These ribs are so delicious. If you offer them to a few of your vegetarian friends, you just might turn them into rib lovers. In this bowl, I've mixed an amazing dry rub. I have three slabs of ribs that I've rinsed off with cold water and I patted them dry with a paper towel. Now I'm going to remove the silver skin that covers the bone side of each rack. If this skin is left on, it's going to keep my seasonings from penetrating the meat and it will cook into a chewy, leathery skin that I really don't want on my ribs. Here's how you remove the silver skin. I'm going to slide this table knife underneath the silver skin anywhere along the rack. You're going to lift it and loosen it just enough so you can grab it. And with a paper towel, I'm going to grab it and just pull it straight off like so. It's going to be slippery so you're going to have to hang on to it really good with your paper towel. Pull it completely off to the end and discard it. I've pierced both sides of my ribs in between each bone with a meat tenderizer. If you don't have a meat tenderizer you can use a fork. Now starting with the bone side I'm going to liberally spread my rub over each rack and gently massage into the meat. You want to make sure you get it all the way out to the ends and just really work it in there. And I'm going to flip them over and I'm going to repeat the process on the meaty side. I've placed my ribs bone side down and I'm going to let them rest on a three inch high wire rack for 30 minutes. Now I'm going to prepare my roasting pan and the smoking mixture. There are three very important ingredients to tea smoking. You need loose leaf tea, rice, and sugar. The tea leaves releases smoke to flavor the meat. The rice is going to be my fuel source that keeps all my ingredients burning. The sugar will sweeten the, my ribs. And the spices and the aromatics will add yet another layer of amazing flavor. I placed my tea smoking mixture in my pan and scattered it all around. Now I'm going to place the wire wrap with the ribs inside my roasting pan above the smoking mixture. I've laid two pieces of aluminum foil on the top of my roasting pan and now I'm going to crimp the edges to seal the top layer to the bottom layer. Now I'm going to add two more pieces of aluminum to make sure all the moisture and the smoke stays in the pan during the smoking process. 
If the pan is not tightly sealed, you just might smoke up your kitchen. Trust me on this one. Been there, done that. First time I made these ribs, I set my smoke alarm off, had the dog freaking out, and my husband thought the kitchen was on fire. I'm gonna set the roasting pan on two burners over medium-low heat and smoke my ribs for 30 minutes. Don't forget to turn on your exhaust fan. My ribs have been smoking over 25 minutes and as you can see, no smoke. Just wonderful smells. Oh, are they done yet? My timer just went off. I'm going to turn my burners off, turn my exhaust fan off, and then I'm going to remove the pan to the other side of my stove. And as you can see, there is still no smoke. My ribs have been resting for 30 minutes. My sauce, my Asian inspired barbecue sauce is simmering. I let that simmer for about 20 minutes. Now I'm going to pour one cup of orange juice in the corner of my pan. And you can use apple juice as well. Apple juice will add a really nice flavor to the ribs also. Reseal it. Make sure none of the moisture or the smoke escape. I've added another piece of aluminum foil on the end just to make sure that all the moisture and steam stays in the pan during my roasting process. My ribs are going into the oven for two hours and you wonder what I'm going to be doing for two hours? <laughs> I've set my timer for one hour. At the end of one hour, I'm going to go back in the house, refill my watermelon sangria. It is excellent, by the way. Come back up, reset my timer for 30 more minutes. By then, this will be ready for another refill. I'm going to go in the house, coat my ribs with an Asian-inspired barbecue sauce. They'll be good to go. It's a rough job slaving over a hot stove, but somebody has to do it. After an hour and a half of fun in the sun, I've come in the house, taken my ribs out of the oven, they've been roasting, and I carefully peeled back the aluminum foil, and be real careful with that step because that steam will come out and burn you. You can tell when the ribs are just about gone because you can see the meat that's starting to leave the end of the bone. I've generously coated my ribs with my Asian inspired barbecue sauce and you ought to smell my kitchen. Oh, my word. Now I'm going to flip them over and I'm going to coat the bone side of my ribs. I've generously coated my ribs on the bone side with my Asian inspired barbecue sauce. I'm going to lay the aluminum foil over the top, place them back into the oven, for my final 30 minutes roasting time. My ribs are out of the oven after two hours of slow roasting. I let them rest for five minutes. So I'm going to cut them in between the bone, just like so. Look at that. How juicy that is. Gee, look at Aunt Brandy. Dr. Arn said you can't have much pork, so you're not going to get much. Look at this. These things are so tender. The meat just pulls off of the bone. Look at that. One piece? <laughs> oh, dip, dip, dip. Gotta have extra, extra sauce. And Brandy mm -hmm. has to wait for her share. Mm-hmm. You want some, Brandy? 
Randy, remember Dr. Arndt said you can't have too much pork, but I'm going to let you taste some anyway. Don't tell him though, okay? You ready? Taste. Is it good? I finished cutting all my ribs. I drizzled them with my Asian barbecue sauce, garnished them with green onions, and now I think it is time to eat. And as I said earlier, these ribs are so tender. Look at this. The meat just pulls off of the bone. Now, as my dad used to say, these lip, these ribs are lip smacking, finger licking good. Oh. Did I tell you earlier? If you offer these to your vegetarian friends, you're probably going to convert them into rib lovers. Mm. Look at that. How clean that bone is. Mm, mm, mm. Oh. Mm. Mercy. To order a copy of my cookbook, The Road to Good Cooking, please go to my website at www.theroadtogoodcooking.com. My cookbook has over 400 colored illustrations, step-by-step -step instructions, and all the detailed information you will need to prepare a wonderful meal for your family and friends. Thank you for stopping by my cooking channel, and I'll see you again soon.